Statement of fact number 19. Statement of fact. Ms. Garcia testified that practically every person that is seen in Dr. Buttar's clinic is diagnosed as having metal toxicity and of these patients, whether they suffer from cancer or some other ailment or, or provide a chelation therapy for their putative diagnosis of metal toxicity. Chronic heavy metal toxicity is an endemic situation in our office. We check everybody for it and if they have heavy metals documented, we treat it. That is exactly what we do because patients that come to us are toxic. If they weren't toxic, they wouldn't be having the symptoms and they certainly wouldn't have failed what everybody else did. So of course these patients are going to be coming to us and, and once we look for the, once we turn over the rock that nobody else is bothered turning over and we see what the problem is, yes, we are going to address it. And if every patient that's coming to us has failed conventional treatment or the vast majority has failed conventional treatments, then of course we're going to be looking at every rock to turn over to, to make a decision and to see what the patient needs. And these patients had metal toxicity, so we addressed it. We are not motivated by, by the, the medical, I didn't take an oath to um, the medical board that I'm going to do practice medicine the way the medical board wants me to practice medicine. I took an oath that I was going to practice medicine the best way I knew how to practice medicine to take care of my patients. My oath is a fiduciary obligation and responsibility to my patients, not to the medical board. Statement of fact number 20, Dr. Buttar may not have any contact with patients before they are started on a protocol for metal toxicity. In one instant patient E, a child suffering from autism was treated by Dr. Buttar without Dr. Buttar ever examining or personally seeing the patient. Patient E's mother testified that she contacted Dr. Buttar's office to seek a new form of treatment for her daughter's autism. This new form of treatment that patient E's mother sought was a topical chelation cream. The topical chelation cream was developed, manufactured, and sold to, to patients by Dr. Buttar. The first point is that on this statement, this isn't even one of the complaints. Patient E is not even a complaint that came in. This actually happened because the medical board put this information out through CAC Quack Busters and got the information out. And this was a person that had actually sent us a letter thanking us for having treated her child and that she was going to change doctors because the doctor that she was, had found was closer to where she lived, which is in some, somewhere in central uh, U.S. And she thanked us for all the things that we had done. She only came to our clinic one time. And the rest of the time, we have patients, like I said, from all over the world. So this patient, this patient statement is actually being put into this particular uh, uh, proposed recommended decisions. And yet, the medical board hasn't even brought formal charges on this. But this is going to be one of the cases that the medical board is going to use in about another four months to bring against me. This particular case of a child that only came to our clinic one time, and I did not see the child. The child had been... The, the mother had talked to uh, Jane, was fully aware of what, what we were going to do, had requested that, had cam come to us specifically for that type of treatment, and had signed the consent order for all, that, uh, for all this stuff to be done. On top of that, blood work was acquired and tests were done beforehand to make sure that the child was completely fine before we started treating the child for her metal toxicity and for her autism. This, again, is a perfect example of the medical board taking one little piece of information. This woman was disgruntled. In fact, she was so embarrassed by this herself that when she, te when she uh, complained to the medical board, she didn't want her name even brought up because she knew what type of ramifications she was going to have from other parents. Um, absolutely a very ungrateful individual. I can't help the fact that this particular woman was disgruntled with um, what she read on the internet and then decide to go against what she said in the chart as well as an email from her family to us saying how grateful for they were for the treatments and even said God bless and continue doing what you're doing. I mean just it's unbelievable the hypocrisy that this person was shown but there was no complaint. The complaint was only that she didn't see me. That was it. Not that she wasn't seen by a provider that was licensed but that she didn't see me. And the medical board takes that and tries to construe it into us seeing a child without ever doing anything for the child beforehand. We had tested, done all the tests, all, everything appropriate that we were supposed to do before, doing the t before uh, treating the child. Our rule is do no harm. We don't put this crap into the patient's body, the thimerosal, and condone it like the medical board condones it, and then have to complain about people that are trying to take it out. We take the crap out. So again, I'm, I'm absolutely... This, this is like enough to make me go postal on the medical board for making these type of ridiculous statements, taking their own inadequacy, their own dangerous condonement of vaccines being injected into a child that causes injury in the first freaking place and then try to say that we're not taking care of the child properly? I mean, what type of hypocrisy? 
All I can tell you is that I'm so grateful that there is a higher order out there, and these bastards will burn in hell when their time is due. That's all I can tell you. And I have, I have a, um, if I'm taken right now, I'm very, very comfortable with where God's gonna, whatever God does with me. I wonder if these people can say the same thing.